Hey, Foot Clan, we got a great show for you today. It's a tough waiver wire show. I'll be honest with you, but we might find some diamonds in that rough. Tune in. You don't want to miss it. Foot Clan, we have made some improvements to our API with all of the Join the Foot tools. So you're used to using, you know, the flex rankings, the four-player start-sit tool, our consistency charts. We're just making it better and better for you for this week. And if you are not yet supporting the show and an official member of the Foot Clan using these tools, check it out. Go to jointhefoot.com, get access to all of those, plus an extra show every single week. We also want to thank Navy Federal for supporting the show today. Navy Federal is proud to serve over 8 million members, including active duty military, the DOD veterans, and their families. You'll receive a lifetime of membership benefits with Navy Federal, and you can easily access accounts, transfer money, pay bills, and deposit checks with the Navy Federal mobile app. Visit NavyFederal.org footballers for more information or call 1-888-842-6328 or download the Navy Federal Credit Union app. Message and data rates may apply. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast, coming to you from pristineauction.com studios with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ah, welcome in. Another day just getting started, gentlemen. That's the best place to begin. Welcome into the show, the Fantasy Footballers. Back again, Andy, Mike, and Jason. You can find us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. It's waiver day or something like it. It's Tuesday. We're heading into week six. We had a Monday night football game last night. Oh, boy, did we. At least one team did. Yeah. <laughs> we were right back to the dirty, messy, ugly offense. Yeah. Cleveland Browns looked awful. I think they suck. I agree with you. I think they suck. They can't use any of their weapons because Baker Mayfield has no pocket ever. He, I, I was searching for gifts to share what I think is happening in the pocket, but I couldn't find anybody with just their feet on fire mm. running around. Because he gets, he could have gone with uh, someone running on like hot coals. Yeah, that that's a good example, and it just builds on itself every game when you have this happen. You get sacked and you get sacked and you get sacked, and you start getting real scared. And he's not able to. I mean, he he's got his own problems. Baker's been inaccurate. Eight for twenty two, one hundred yards. There, I saw a fantasy football matchup. Where somebody won like one forty three point eight to one forty three point six and the opponent had Baker and Baker had zero yes. dot I, zero zero points. Oh. I, I saw a few of these where people went into Monday night losing by a point and a half and the other team had Baker Mayfield and they won because in a lot of scoring formats Baker had negative two points. Then Baker gets pulled at the very end of the game appropriately. Game was out of hand. It it's it's and, not pretty man. And then I've s i have saw several people Lose and slash win because of the Odell Beckham fumble. <laughs> oh, yeah. Where, what was he doing? What was he doing I that tell entire you, play? I can tell you exactly what he was doing. He's not their punt returner. So when you put Beckham in on a desperation one-off, you ask him to do something special, he tries to do something special. Fair. It turned into a circus. Well, no, it was special. What happened? Yeah. That's true. It was very unique. I yeah. had a close matchup. I had Odell, and I was against the guy with the 49ers defense. Oh! That's a four-point play or something? And I was busy that night, last night, and I, that was the first play when I turned the TV on and that I saw. And wow. And then turned you right turned the TV off. off. Yes. <laughs> yes. That's, look, I mean, if, you, if you're an Odell Beckham owner, obviously you're worried, but I think you should be worried. It's, it's seemingly impossible to get him the ball with how bad that offensive line is. When they trade away, you know, they, they let some offensive linemen leave. Obviously, uh, the, one of the best of all time retired. They trade uh, a great guard to the Giants, and they put all these pieces together, but can't protect them, can't use them. I would still buy him because you could buy him cheap right now. I'm going to read you <laughs> something hilarious here. Player A, player B. 
both players, 26% target share, 518 air yards, 12-yard average depth of target. One of them's the wide receiver 35. One of them's the wide receiver 2. Wow. So one of these is Beckham? One of them's Beckham. That would be the wide receiver 35. The wide receiver 2, Amari Cooper. Everything else is the same. I mean, 26% target share. You could see they were interested in getting him the ball yesterday. Yes. No rhythm, though, on offense. And then no effectiveness anywhere. Not getting to or around the red zone. It's been very difficult to, you know, try to... Baker is a waiver wire fodder quarterback. Odell is not winning you any weeks outside of one out of five. So on the other side of the ball, the 49ers are really, really good at running the football. Oh, my goodness. I think it will suffer slightly Yeah. At, with Kyle Juszczyk's injury. As an MCL injury, if you look at the Matt Breida play, it was entirely Kyle Juszczyk that broke that play open for the long touchdown run. But this team will figure it out, Honestly, and they're 4-0. One of the biggest things to happen for me personally, watching this Monday night football game, you know, Booger's doing all the things that Booger does, and then he, and then Juszczyk goes out, and he's like, uh oh, for this running game, what's going to happen? I was like, and I said, holy crap. I think I just agreed with Booger on something. Oh, it was yeah. first. It was a first <laughs> and for this, you. And it was, it was terrifying. Yeah. I went to the mirror to make sure my reflection was still there. I gave myself the pinch, <laughs> but there there I was, agreeing with Booger. It's the first time for everything, Mike. <laughs> so we had a, a, an interesting game last night. The 49ers are well Are they coached. just a good team? Yes. They yes, are. they are a good team. Their defense with Bosa got so much better. Plus, they had injuries last oh, year. Oh, Sherman. They got, yeah. They've got players back. And their offense can run the ball so well. And and while obviously taking use check out, they they run the most, uh, you know, of the of the ha the fullback personnel in the league. And use check is there's a reason why he's one of the highest paid running backs, and he's not even, you know, he, they love the fullback. They will take a hit, but they're still going to be very good. The zone, re I mean, you you saw it even after use check went down. They still had some success with some big plays running the ball. And. I, I, I agree. I think San Francisco actually just is a good team. But Tampa Bay, Cincinnati, Pittsburgh, Cleveland. Those are the opponents so far for the San Francisco 49ers. And we've seen some some return to earth for Dallas with the, with the schedule changing. Yeah, you're going to monitor that. I think they're averaging 200 rushing yards a game. They're well coached. They remind me of the Rams in as far as they keep defenses off balance. Tons of these different innovative play calls, end rounds. They can use George Kittle whenever they want. George Kittle's so unique, and he had a nice game. I saw his – I think his prop bet on yardage was 70.5 yards, and he had 70 on the dot. Oh, rough. And now but, having said that, I'm looking at San Francisco's right. uh, upcoming that's, schedule. That's, Juicy? Yes. There's – there. Uh, play the Cardinals <laughs> twice in the next five weeks, the Redskins this coming week. And then you got the Panthers and Seahawks, which are not like just you know easy peasy matchups, but they're, be they're not terrifying. No, FootClanGiveaway.com. You can win a signed Saquon Barkley jersey from PristineAuction.com. You can enter for free at FootClanGiveaway.com. Make sure you check out the website, TheFantasyFootballers.com, for our weekly rankings, start sit tool, articles. All that stuff. There's a week five target report article up there by Aaron Larson right now. Uh, I think we'll go ahead and move move away from the Browns as fast as we can. Oh. News and notes from around the league presented by Sleeper. They call that a Brita. Oh, to Run, move away. Moving from, away from yeah. the Browns as fast as you can. Oh, very nice. Thank very you. nice. I was real wrong on Tevin Coleman. Yeah. I mean, he, he looked healthy when they said he might be available in the morning i was like okay does that mean maybe wilson's out and and coleman can spell somebody but he looked sharp he looked fast your window he looked perfect to, for the offense your window yep. to buy tevin coleman is now officially over hopefully uh you were one of those people that did it the last week or two all right uh big news guys zay jones no longer a buffalo bill acquired by the raiders in exchange for a fifth round pick all right they need wide receiver help, so I, it seems fine. All the fourth-string <laughs> wide receivers 
who like get a little bit of buzz was Trevor Davis. Yeah. Uh, Trevor Davis was on the field a lot. Right. And Zay Jones. And that's why they made the trade. They're just going to go scoop them all up. Like, yeah. One of these guys is going to work out. You know what, though? This is such a fantasy football move because we don't see this very often midseason, but like they're winning. They're three and two. And, and Gruden's looking at his team going, hey, we need. We need to pick up a wide receiver for this team. I'm three and two after five weeks. Does this worry you for Tyrell Williams, who missed last week? Uh, I mean, the Raiders are on the bye this week. Yeah, so not, he gets not so much. Okay, but they just need depth. I think they probably realized, oh, when Tyrell's out, this <laughs> is what we have. So this week we've got some updates. The Thursday night game, the Patriots are taking on the Giants. Kind of. The Giants will be without <laughs> everyone. Sterling Shepard. Concussion. Evan Ingram, unlikely to play. And this one was wild because I like this one caught me off guard this morning. It's an morning. MCL injury. I had missed it. And this is reportedly the, like when Evan Ingram missed some games last year, he had an MCL problem. So Evan Ingram might be out a few weeks. Saquon and Gallman both likely to miss this game. Yeah, both Shepard and Gallman are concussions because they play on Thursday night football. It's very difficult to pass through the protocol right. on short. Yeah, Shepard could be out a few weeks because of the previous concussion too. You're right. Uh, Patriots, they let Ben Watson go. He's no longer a Patriot. So they chose not to activate him from the his roster exemption spot on the suspended list, and so he's gone. Kind of a surprise. They don't yes. have a lot of help there, but that's – Something that we they, don't need it. Yeah, it's, what they it's say. Strange. He still wants to play. I I don't have you know, no interest in the aged Watson signing nope. somewhere. No, you can drop Chris him. Herndon. Uh, needs to be evaluated <laughs> in practice before Adam Gase activates him. Come on, Gase. <laughs> don't oh. the guy Herndon was around for training camp. He was out there for preseason where he looked great. Hold on, no, hold on, Chris Herndon. Who do you think you are? We're doing really good things here with the New York Jets. You need to earn you're, your way on the field. You're not Chris Herndon the first. <laughs> you're not Chris Herndon the second or the third. You're Chris Herndon the fourth. I will evaluate you. Yeah. Adam Gase. <laughs> it's not in charge. <laughs> <laughs> Did you guys see the – it kind of went viral a little bit. Someone made some sunglasses for the Miami Dolphins. No. But they were uh, very Adam Gaze sunglasses, not safe for work. Oh, no. I, I had no <laughs> idea what you're talking about. I look, could, I could, look it up. I think I do. Uh, Zach Taylor confirms AJ Green won't practice this week. He'll be inactive. John Harbaugh said Hollywood Brown's ankle injury is, quote, nothing serious. Doug Peterson said Deshaun Jackson with the abdomen injury is still ra rehabbing, but, quote, getting close. That's great news because we hadn't heard anything you had mentioned a few days ago. I was worried ago. about the sports, silence. sports hernia. Right, and now it appears he won't need a sports hernia surgery, which means, I don't know, maybe the week after next he's on the field. That would be very helpful. A lot of my arguments as to why Carson Wentz would remain or be an elite fantasy uh, option was on the basis of what Deshaun Jackson does on the field and how he helps elevate fantasy production at the quarterback position. So it would be nice if he was out there because you saw it in week one. It really mattered. Eight for 157 and two in week one. Yeah. Ian Rampaport uh, reporting James O'Shaughnessy tied in for the Jags, torn ACL out for the season. That's, Sucks, a, that's a shame because, yeah. it, you know, he was he was one of those safety valve outlets for Minshew that was being used. At least he got to go out with one of the coolest plays of the year so far where he it was overthrown, tipped it up, tipped it up again, caught it. It was great. All right, news and notes as always brought to you by the Sleeper app. Get the Sleeper app. You won't miss any of the injury news. So go grab it. It's free, completely free. All right, it's waiver time. Put me in, coach. I'm going to be honest with you. <laughs> it's a rough one on the waiver wire. It is a rough one, but we have to do it because this is the time where you need to Someone off your bench to fill in. You have the the players from the Lions returning. Like, Kerryon Johnson, he's back. Yeah. All of your Dolphins. Oh, Ken Kenyon Drake. They're they're back. You got him back. But this week, you will be without your Bears, Bills, Colts, and Raiders. That's a lot of fantasy players right there. Yesterday on the show, Mike, you were talking about – or we were all talking about Kyler Murray and the 
the fact that the Cardinals are struggling tremendously in the red zone. And and the you brought up the ratio or the percentage. His of, touchdown percentage is at two. Yeah. yeah. So the Cardinals right now are 30th in the NFL in red zone conversion to touchdown. And it's it's basically they're at uh, 30%. 30% of the time inside the red zone, they convert it to a touchdown. If you look at the number one team in football, it's Seattle. Seattle's at like 72%, something like that. The only teams worse than Arizona are the Cincinnati Bengals, mm. who have struggled in the red zone under Zach Taylor. And then dead last are the returning from by Miami Dolphins. 16% of the time. Trust the process. Which is as bad as it gets. But like you said, Bears, Bills, Colts, Raiders on by. Let's start at the wide receiver position. We always start with some probably owned but worth checking candidates. I'm going to add one to our list today just in case because I've seen too many people on Twitter bring up his name, and that would be if for some reason Will Fuller's out there, which he has been oh, yeah. in people's leagues. Will Fuller needs to be your top priority. But to what end? What? How much fab would you spend on Will Fuller if he's sitting out there on your waiver wire? Uh, I mean, it, it really depends if you need a wide receiver. They take on the Kansas City Chiefs, so it's possible you see another good game from Will Fuller. But, I mean, I wouldn't go crazy because you what he did was – not you can't duplicate what right. he did, you're which kinda, was one of the of, one of the best fantasy performances in the last fifteen years. But it wasn't on the basis of three catches, right. each of them seventy four yard touchdowns. This was a what a fifteen catch day. Well, the, for the, Will Fuller, that's the part targets? of it is the target volume that he will not he won't get target volume like that again. But he's still he's a great player on a good offense. So yes, he uh, let's just put him in context with these other players who are probably owned. But it, but make sure just take a little peek ski at the waiver wire, because Will Fuller, Michael Gallup, Golden Tate, Robbie Anderson, they're available in about forty percent of leagues. The so just just make sure that they're not there. Yeah, the name that I wanted to bring up because I I think Will Fuller is absolutely must have. If if he's out there, you've got to make him one of your top priorities. But I would actually say Gallup is a better priority than Fuller. Sure. I think that's a, a discussion worthy of having considering. You've seen three games with Gallup, seven for 158, six for 68, and seven for 113, and a touchdown on 14 targets. Both of these guys are clearly the wide receiver two for their respective teams. You look at the upcoming schedule, Michael Gallup has the Jets, the Eagles, the Giants, all really good matchups. Uh, Michael Gallup has surprised me. I mean, the the, the whole Dallas offense – has really become a uh, new, yeah, you know, passing offense, which is great for their wide receiver too. Yeah, I, I lean Fuller over Gallup, but not by a lot. And if they're both sitting out there on the waiver wire, I'd probably spend, you know, I'd I'd spend in the forties for either of those. Wow, in the forties, I'd spend probably forty to forty five dollars on Will Fuller, and I'd probably spend thirty to thirty five on Michael Gallup. What you will get them. I I mean I would I mean I would assume well Fuller because people chase points you might not get him but yeah I would I I feel like at wide receiver one of those two guys I'd be in the the 20s Will, Will Fuller has had all of the metrics to match the, a top end wide receiver except it just hadn't bounced his way air yards 95 plus percent of snaps targets going his direction it just didn't happen until this week so right. Yeah, is it going to be this week again? No, that was the best fantasy production in 15 years at the wide receiver position. But I'm I'm in the business of winning championships, so I'd spend that money on a known commodity. I I agree. Gallup, I think, is becoming that. He was banged up and hurt, but comes right back into the fold. And the, Randall Cobb's not doing nothing. Jason Witten's not doing nothing. It's going to be Cooper, who Cooper could disappear at any minute with the amount of MRIs he gets on a regular basis. So I like both of those guys. One more, I'll throw one more player into the probably owned before we get into the uh, the mucky muck here with these players. But D.D. Westbrook, he's he's kind of returned to life here with Gardner, forty six yards, sixty six yards, and eighty two this past week on eleven targets. So he, Gardner's figuring out how to use the sweetie. He's interesting. Foles will be back at some point. Man, that's going to be interesting. He will be back. I, I the whole I've I've had a couple of people debate me on this the the fact that if they're winning games and Minshew's playing well, but they just 
they paid way too much money for I, Foles. Look, I totally Foles get the is, money, but he has he doesn't have like equity of wins built in. If I'm just saying it I don't think it's a, a surefire thing that Foles just walks right back into the starting role if when you're over halfway through the season and if Gardner continues to play well. Yeah, I, I, I'm definitely on Jason's side on this one. Nick Foles, when you get hurt throwing a touchdown pass, you get your job back. Uh, well, I mean, we'll see. Certainly when you're paid that amount of money and we're effective in your limited run. That's what I, I, I certainly believe. And Gardner, you know, he's been, he's been good. He's, I, he's been, been good. He's been a great character that has so far exceeded the expectations of him that America's in love. But he's not coming out here, you know – Pat Mahomesing. No, he's, no, he's no, been he's high completion percentage, good quarterback r- rating. He's been just, just like a smidgen, like an inch above game manager level. Yeah. And and he's starting to, you know, he's in a he was in more of a shootout this past week, and it's it's good to see. But he also didn't bring him back, and you know, you give yourself a chance on a on a free agent signing, in my opinion. But. Um, All yeah, right. we we got to get into the mucky muck. Yeah, before we do that, I want to thank today's sponsor, Hello Fresh. Ladies and gentlemen, hello. hello, Fresh. It's America's number one meal kit. You get the easy seasonal recipes and pre-measured ingredients delivered right to your door. All you have to do is cook and enjoy. Meal planning stinks. Going to the grocery store, it stinks. And Hello Fresh removes those obstacles between you and delicious dinners. You get step-by-step recipes to pre-measured ingredients. They give you everything you need to get a wow-worthy dinner on the table in just about 30 minutes. Say goodbye to endless grocery store trips and takeout food. HelloFresh offers something for everyone, from family recipes to calorie smart, vegetarian, fun menu series like Hall of Fame, and Kraft Burgers. We have a winner because Kraft Burgers always win. We have all experienced HelloFresh. It's a sensational product and service. The food is always delicious, always easy to cook. And right now you can get $80 off your first month of HelloFresh, go to HelloFresh.com slash footballers80, enter the code footballers80. It's like receiving eight meals free when you go to HelloFresh.com slash footballers80, enter footballers80. And we want to thank Zip Recruiter. Look, at my former business when we were hiring, the worst part of hiring is trying to find a good candidate. It is so hard, and that's where Zip Recruiter comes in. Calf- Cafe Altura COO. Dylan Miskowitz needed to hire a director of coffee for his organic coffee company. He was having trouble finding qualified applicants, switched to ZipRecruiter, found him no problem. That's because ZipRecruiter, you know, it doesn't depend on you finding candidates. It finds them for you. It has technology that identifies people with the right experience. It invites, it invites them to apply for the job that they are qualified for, so you get them Fast. Dylan posted his job on ZipRecruiter and was impressed by how quickly the candidates actually applied. That's how he found a new director of coffee in just a few days. No wonder four out of five people who post on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate within the same day. See why ZipRecruiter is effective for business of all sizes. Try ZipRecruiter for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash footballers. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash footballers. ZipRecruiter.com slash footballers, the smartest way to hire. All right, so it's true. You, if you have Allen Robinson or John Brown or T.Y. Hilton or Tyrell Williams or an injured Sterling Shepard or an injured Sammy Watkins or an injured Marquise Brown, you need somebody to play. Yeah. And unfortunately, um, no wide receivers available. All right, that is it for today's show. <laughs> and No, uh, hey, they're, they're thin. It's they, not good. It's not good. So we'll bring up Auden Tate's name. He was three for 26 and a touchdown last week on six targets, played 100% of snaps. And at this point, when you are looking at something, a shot, you want to take a shot, snap count's a great way to go. You at least have them on the field. I don't want to be in a situation where I'm going, boy, only in three wide receiver sets or four wide receiver sets, maybe they, they meander out there. Guaranteed snap count, some targets. That's where Auden Tate, Muhammad Sanu, those two guys – Geronimo Allison. Ugh. You I mean, know, you know who Jameson I, Crowder. I'll throw a name out there that's gross. You certainly aren't in love with it. And Adam Gaze. No, uh, no uh, Preston Williams. 
the Miami Dolphins wide receiver rookie who was great in uh, preseason. They're coming off a bye in a winnable matchup against the Redskins. You know, he's a guy that through the first four games was on pace for 120 targets. That's what you're looking for, you know. Uh, had a touchdown week one. These are these are gross options. And, and Footland, tomorrow, because we, we realize, like, in our own leagues, we're looking at the waiver wires. It's it's sparse right now, and you might need to make a, an acquisition. So we're going to be talking about trades sure. tomorrow, uh, who you could be targeting at some of these positions, who you could be giving up, help you in that way, because obviously waivers are super important. But if, if you can't get someone – You know who I'd sign? I my, know, my, I know. my odd and Tate of the week, it's not. I don't see it on our lists right now. I'd sign Darius Slayton. Wide receiver for the New York Giants against the Pats. Hundred percent. Yeah, I would. I'd pay. I'd play Darius Slayton if I needed uh, a shot because you're without Sterling Shepard, Evan Ingram, Saquon Barkley, Wayne Gallman, and you're going to be down. And they're going to have opportunities in this game. And and Slayton's been, believe it or not, a pretty consistent player on this team. And now you're missing a couple pieces. So, look, you're bottom of the barrel with him. But you're not getting a whole lot out of, of some of these other options. Do you want to play? I I'm, I'm, I guess Paul Richardson would be in consideration going up against Miami. Yeah, I mean, my concern is is if Gilmore is on uh, Slayton and, like, which we not. Like, Pro Football Focus is projecting Jason McCourty. So it <laughs> doesn't get any better. No, it doesn't get any better, but you're in a position where you're throwing but, the ball for four quarters. And I, so... Sure, um, I will throw out my gross name of the week. It is the counterpoint to Jason's. Devontae? I didn't want to say it. Look, Devontae Parker, in games that he hasn't played against the New England Patriots, he has hit at least 50 yards in those. 75 yards week one, 56, 70 and a touchdown last week, again, or two weeks ago against the Chargers, and they're playing Washington at home. I. One of it's, those two guys has to have a decent game, right? right? I I think so. They're still an, uh, a team in the National Football League. They actually were just moved to the ACC. Oh, uh, that makes so – then, uh, then I think they've got a better chance. Let's <laughs> DK Metcalf should have been in the probably own, but maybe not category as well. Has Cleveland this week. Is at least getting consistent playing time. He fits that category. Mike brought up Didi. The other group of guys, I mean, we're all going to have different opinions, it sounds like, on your favorite pickups. Um, what about Byron Pringle? I think a lot of people want to know, what do you do with Byron Pringle if if Sammy misses the week? If Sammy misses, 100%. It's just like Demarcus Robinson. It's like McCole Hardman. He's in the roulette wheel. It's a, Yeah, it's just a wheel, though, right? McCole yes. Hardman, Demarcus, and Pringle. 100% is a wheel. But like when you're playing roulette and you hit on a number – your odds get paid off what what it like seventy two to one. But what I mean, would you spend on? Let's say you know Sammy's going to miss a week. What do you spend on Pringle to play him? And does he take precedent over all these other names that you're bringing up? If I knew that Sammy were was going to be out, then yes, I would spend. And I need that waiver wire fill in this week because of bye weeks. I'd spend eight to ten bucks on Pringle just to take the shot. I'd rather. I want in on the Chiefs offense more than I want to put my week in the hands of Preston Williams and Parker and Slayton. Are you concerned that if you put Pringle in your lineup this week, you'll have to kind of keep him there for the remainder of the year? Once you pop. <laughs> there, you stop. Jason. I was Jason right with where I look, was. If it's a food reference, I'm your man. That was so quick, too. Oh, you yeah. didn't even hesitate. I love Pringles. You were probably just waiting for Not that joke. Yes, uh, look, I'm I'm not. I wouldn't spend eight to ten on him. I, the but way that's that I knowing see it, Sammy is out, and you don't know that right now. Well, and I assume, and and possibly incorrectly, that uh, Tyreek Hills should be back so he, this week. Uh, I mean, that's kind of sixty forty. I would say right now, but to me, it's Michael Gallup, Will Fuller, some of those. They shouldn't be out there, guys. I'm going to obviously Golden spend Tate. up. I'm going to grab them, and then outside of that. I'm not spending a dollar of fab on any of these players. You're I'm just not, putting in bids. I'm putting zero in dollar zero bids. dollar bids in whatever order I want. I'm not spending my waiver priority. I'm waiting till it's open waivers if that's your league setting. And I'm going to go get any one of these guys because they're all the same Russian roulette. And that's the roulette that you're actually playing. True. It's just trying not, 
trying not to die. <laughs> what did I win? You're alive. Yes, congratulations. You won existence. <laughs> Sam Darnold's going to play week six. It's been announced. He's going to start. Really? Oh, Jameson Crowder. Week, week six. Uh, I would put him a little higher now. Uh, yeah, Jameson Crowder gets the bump, and we've we've talked about Robbie Anderson here. It's it's you're still a few weeks away, but the Jets are going to hit a, a nice juicy stretch of their schedule. Not the next three weeks though. No, Dallas, it's still New a little England, bit. Dallas, New England, Jacksonville. Confidence is the is the key. Sammy Watkins, what do you do? Do you want him active? If you own Sammy Watkins, do you want him active? Yes. My, my team if does. You, yeah. you said yes because yes. Yes, with a hamstring injury. I see. I see what you're saying. You know what I'm saying? You, like yes, you're gonna you, play. I'm pretty much saying if he's active, you're probably playing him. And if you probably play him, he's playing with an uh, injured hamstring and could disappear on you. Man, at some point, you, I mean, you bring up a really, really solid point because at some point over the course of an entire career, you, whenever I've go gone in defense of Sammy, and I look at the games that he has played, uh, you know, and I, and I look at the snap counts on a game by game basis. You have to look at it that way because he has so many games in his career where he has started and not finished. That's that's the thing that has hurt you the most. When a guy is injured and you know he's injured and you're that's not going to start specialty. him and you're not going to play him, it really is. So you actually bring up a good point. Do you want to play a guy who could go out there, give you a good four snaps, and then he go on goose? <laughs> you don't want him to go on goose. No. All right, we need to move on to some some running back options. I wish we could. <laughs> I mean, Tevin Coleman is apparently out there in about thirty percent of leagues. He needs to be owned. Not our leagues. We told people last week. I mean, no, if they were listening. We said if he's out there, you've got to get him now. Let's talk about Fab spend on some what we're deeming the main waiver wire pickups at the running back position. You thought wide receiver was thin. You don't know nothing. Oh my beer. Uh, <laughs> The Giants are are likely starting John Hilleman at running back. Now, Hilleman was an undrafted free agent, played at Boston College, played at Rutgers. Mediocre measurables, obviously undrafted. 4-5-4 four, four guy. He caught 24 balls one year, which is... That's pretty good for college. Promising yeah. in the sense that That's what you have the to hope only for. way he's he's not going to go to New England and gash the Patriots on the ground. You're hoping You're right. in a PPR back, in a PPR league, he can catch... Five balls. Yeah, I mean, I, I told Mike when I was walking in this morning, I'm like, I probably wouldn't spend more than, look, if you're desperate and you need somebody, he's probably going to start. So three to five fab is about all I'm spending. Let me ask you this. Would you go after Hilleman, who should be the starter and theoretically could see a bunch of volume, or you have a backup running back, Chase Edmonds, who has been getting more and more work over the, the weeks, He's up against Atlanta. The, the Cardinals are playing the Atlanta Falcons. Could be a lot of points in this game. And David Johnson is dealing with a back injury. Right, so you're saying... like Chase, To me, Chase Simmons has to be picked up. But if you need a guy to play right now, there this week because of the bye weeks, would you rather roll start the dice Edmonds on Edmonds as yeah. a backup or start Hilleman as the starter? Right. I would as rather a, start Hilleman, to be honest. Hilleman's going to get it, and this is, uh, you know, Gallman and Saquon. Saquon can still play. That's the one thing we don't know. He has not been ruled out. Unlikely, though. I wouldn't play him against New England. What are you doing? And it's a short week. You're not going to win. You get extra rest. Like, don't. Yes, exactly. You're not going to win. Don't bring him back too but early. I'm, I'm facing a decision as a David Johnson owner. I've got a couple flex spots beyond David Johnson. I could go spend on Hilleman a little bit, or I could just put Chase Edmonds in there. And no, I have the entire Arizona backfield at home against Atlanta. Now, Atlanta's been okay against the run, pretty good. But Arizona last week, I don't know if you guys realize this, that was the third biggest rushing performance of any team the entire year, what Arizona did on the ground. Now, that's factors in what Kyler Murray did, but it was like 250-plus rushing yards on the ground. Kyler plus Chase Edmonds, who had a breakaway touchdown, plus David Johnson, best run, rushing game on the, on the ground. What would you do in my position? If you're staring down playing the tandem of Edmonds and David Johnson or going Hilleman? Man, I out of those two, I think I would throw Edmonds yeah, in. I I lean the Edmonds side as of right now. Interesting. <laughs> That's wild. 
Last week, Edmonds was eight for 68 and a touchdown. Three for 18 on four targets through the air. So that that's where I'm I'm interested too because he had the four targets. Uh, the the Falcons give up a bunch of receptions to the running back position, and maybe the, maybe they need to give David Johnson a little bit more time off to get this this back right. The Cardinals' offense is changing quite a bit over the last few weeks. I I don't know if you guys knew they only ran four wide receivers in this game on 13 percent of snaps. They actually committed to the run. They finally won a game, but. You can do worse than a guy that you know is going to be a starter. That's my point with Hilleman. He's not it's prolific, fair. but last week he actually ran the fifth most running back passing routes. It didn't matter because he caught one pass on, on, on a couple targets, but at least he's capable. Okay, so here's a guy I would start over either one of those two guys. And again, oh, yeah. no, yeah. I, would, is it, I would. Is it Adrian Peterson? It's yeah. all day Adrian Peterson. I would too. He is playing uh, for a team that has released their – Head coach, they're back. <laughs> released. Released, yes. It's not like fired. A, not fired. Let him go. Well, I mean, in in fairness, it's the exact same thing, right? It's so, like it's, We say release players, but they're firing them. Yeah, but for, They've got a contract just the same. What they had done for him, though, is more of like old yeller. Like, <laughs> like they're just putting him out of his misery. <laughs> uh, yeah, so uh, Adrian Peterson, he, I think he's going to get the rock. And he has not done much he's with it. He's going to. But he has not yet faced the Miami Dolphins. The Miami Dolphins have given up. I want to read these out loud. I don't just want to equivocate. They're dead last in the league against running back positions. The running back position. They've given up at least a touchdown to the running back in every game. They've given up 190 rushing yards, 117, 228, and 80 to running backs. Nice. Yeah, They've Adrian given Peterson up is a good so weekly spot. So many points. Now, the game is in Miami, and Adrian Peterson is over the hill, but you'd play him over both those hey, guys. Where do pe when people are over the hill, where do they go? To Miami. Yeah. 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 Narrative. <laughs> old man narrative. This is a new one. <laughs> the old, I've, I've not heard this fantasy <laughs> football narrative before. Nor have I. But when you're old look, and you go to Miami, you will succeed. It worked for Frank Gore's career. That's we, true. we did make it. You have heard it before. Uh, we made that joke with Frank Gore going we? to Miami. Yes, I'm we sure did. I'm sure we did. We did, uh, but obviously he is infinite. He yes. is all. All right, Jalen Samuels could be out there, 57% owned. Naeem Hines, whatever, Hines he's on by. Uh, Rex Burkhead didn't play this past week, could be sitting out there. Any interest in Burkhead on Thursday night if he's if back? He, if he plays, yeah, I have some interest. I would you spend five fab on Rex Burkhead? Five? Yeah. Sure. Yeah, I, I would do that, but I, I have a hard time starting him because – because it's a Thursday night game and he's been dealing with injury, you, you've always got that incentive of the extra rest if you don't start him. Sure. All right, what do you, what's your handcuff strategy at this point in the season, depending on you know what your record is? There's a lot of handcuffs there are. out there. Uh, yeah, certainly. I mean, I look, as the Christian McCaffrey owner, I started to get scared when he was hobbled. You saw Reggie Bonifant come on and dominate in his few carries. You know that's the type of that's the type of handcuff where I think I want him on my roster. It's just a matter of what options you have to drop. But he, you know, he looked good in in replacement. That's the same with uh, you know Alexander Madison. You see, Madison is a must own to me. At Pollard this point. is a must own. Malcolm hey. Brown to me is a must own and, because of Gurley's knee. And when I'm saying must own, I'm saying if I don't have Dalvin Cook, I don't care. I want to stash Alexander Madison at this point because the more time goes on and the more wear and tear, this is, this is when the injuries start happening to these players. And we have this guy. He's in our uh, handcuff section, but uh, Edo Smith might be a little bit more than that. He has the handcuff upside built in if, if Devontae Freeman misses any time, but the past two weeks he has a combined 10 targets. Like He is usable in a PPR situation. Six for 45 through the air and got five carries. Gross. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, but that's where we are, man. It's gross. But he's so bad. I don't care. But why does we're he get... talking about We're talking about John Hilleman. And uh, you're, you're grossed out by Edo Smith? Exactly. <laughs> Breaking news. I wouldn't sign Jalen Samuels just yet. Knee scope yesterday, out for a month. What? Yeah. Holy James! James Conner's playing quarterback now. Yeah, he's gonna have to. 
What? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Jalen Samuels Sorry, Jaylen. out for a month. Just broke. So James Conner and uh Benny Snell. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> okay. Benny he Snell's would... okay. I like Benny Snell. I love no. Benny Snell. As yeah. Gross. He That's, hasn't looked They will great. use him. They a hundred percent will use him. That's gross. Uh, <laughs> would you say it's Snell's? <laughs> yes. Snell's bad. Snell's real bad. All right. Uh, well, that offense is going to have its work cut out for him because I say whatever you want about James Conner. I don't think I believe in in the you know high end ability the way that you do, but I don't think he's got what it takes to to see him see this offense. No, he no. can't put it all on his back and lead them to victory with what they have at quarterback. So it's going to be tough. Does have a really good you know one of those. Uh, uh, funnel to the running back matchups in the Chargers. I think they'll. I think James Conner will get a lot of work. Okay, Jimmy Graham at tight end. Uh, he's probably owned. He's another name that you could throw out there. Maybe Devontae Adams misses another week. Wasn't spectacular for Jimmy Graham. You kind of need him to score, but that's the category a lot of tight ends are in. And at least he had three targets, three catches, forty-one yards. Main pickups: Chris Herndon. I, you, you you activate Chris Herndon, Mr. Gaze. I mean, that's just what you do. But there's a lot of need at tight end, right? Yes. Not till he says please. <laughs> yeah, uh, Chris Herndon will be activated. Oh, no, that's not a please. That's a not until you apologize. Right. You come and you say you're sorry, and then you... they He's got a worksheet for him with the playbook. And if you, if you score Pass above a test. 70%... You're reactivated. Otherwise, here's why Chris Herndon is exciting to me. Like this is going back to the off season. Uh, he is one of just a handful of tight ends since the year 2000 who actually had 500 receiving yards in his rookie year, which trends very well. There are there are a couple outliers on that list, but mostly it's it's guys who turn into usable fantasy tight ends. And Ryan Griffin, the guy who has been playing tight end for the Jets. He's out there on 90-plus percent of the snaps. He is a full-time guy, and Chris Herndon is a much better player at this point than Ryan Griffin. So it's And, it, and you saw in preseason, you saw Sam right. Darnold going to Chris Herndon on those third downs, on those important pickups. I, I do think Herndon is going to be a guy that, in this landscape where uh, you lost Evan Ingram and you've got to get someone off of waivers, I think you could pick him up and start. Another guy I think you could pick up and start – barring what happens with Brandon Cooks, is Gerald Everett. Gerald Everett has been running a lot of routes yes, he over the last two weeks. Now, he got a lot of padding. Not all of it, certainly. He, he had a very good game from the get-go, but he had a lot of padding at the end of the game when Brandon Cooks was out and they were making that last drive. A lot of Gerald Everett on that drive. So I'm not going to chase those points, but if Brandon Cooks is out again, we don't know how he's going to progress through the concussion protocol, Gerald Everett becomes the the third man at uh, you know as a receiver for the Rams offense. It's going to be a very interesting matchup this week. Rams 49ers, one of the games I'm looking forward to the yeah, most. It's a good game. It's worth noting the game script really demanded passing volume for the Rams for these past two games. Uh does that continue? You know, they have Atlanta and Cincinnati in following matchups. I'm not as excited about Everett and th and those two myself. The target share at the tight end position for the Rams is up this year. It's just under 20%. Last year was around the 15% mark. Uh, but Goff is on pace for 710 passing attempts. So that has a lot to do with what's happening. The, the, the difficult thing for me with Gerald Everett is you, you've been waiting for it forever. But this is the player who he was drafted to be. We just haven't seen it for multiple years. So it's really hard to buy into the, the breakout actually happening now. But I think that he is... You, well, you made you the have point. to pick him up. This was the first draft pick by Sean yes. McVay. But then I look at these two breakout games and they lost both games. And I'm like, the recipe for defeat was involving Gerald Everett at a high capacity. I, I think he's a lot safer if Cooks is out. I, I, we just don't know if Cooks is going to be out. I expect him to be back, to be honest, and for the San Francisco matchup. But we'll keep you updated throughout the week with uh, injury updates. Would you, would you be willing to – Seemingly chase the points with Darren Fells. Wide end two this last week. Wide end? Or <laughs> wide end. That's a new one. Uh, tight nice. end 
two this week. He had a touchdown, I think, not th in week two, and then had two touchdowns last week and gets, you know, the Kansas City matchup. No, I wouldn't it, because you had an interim other tight end have a breakout game in between Darren Fells getting lucky to catch a touchdown, uh, and that was Atkins. You know, he had a, the monster game, and you, you, you didn't – It's carb-free. Didn't get any uh, payoff. If you signed and chased those points, so I wouldn't. Uh, uh, was Darren Fells the recipient of the the two Will Fuller uh, drives that he took remember. it off? I can't remember. So Fells had two touchdowns. Fuller had the other three. That's how that game broke down? Yes. Yeah, I, I'd count on Hopkins to involve himself slightly more. What do you guys do with um, Marquez Valdez-Scantling right now? There's a lot of people asking on social media – at the FF Ballers, drop candidates. Can I drop O.J. Howard? Yes. Baker Mayfield. So. Yes, for sure. Marquez, Beldez, Scantley. You uh, know, it, I, com compared to the – we just talked about who's out there on waivers, I would rather have Marquez, Valdez, Scantling than most of the guys I agree. Here, here's what I think. I think that if we're going to, to spend time on Monday talking about Aaron Rodgers not being the same guy, was it – Jason, you gave me those stats. The hold of Allison or MVS – is a hold based on the perceptions of the early Aaron Rodgers. It's not a hold based on the current Aaron Rodgers. Because I don't know what other situation you can count on MBS. You know, maybe you're right. Maybe you'd rather have him on your roster because you know he's a starter as opposed to, you know, Darius Slate. And I don't blame you for that. Yeah. But it, it, if you're not going to play him and Aaron Rodgers is a, is a not a top 12 guy, uh, as often as we thought he would be, then then I think that yes, sure. you, you need to be willing to cut him oh, in yes. the right situation. I'm, I'm 100% willing to cut him, but there is the other side of the equation. When you cut somebody, you're adding somebody. And does it, it – Auden Tate, Mo well, Sanu? Like you just talked about handcuffs, though. I mean, these are certain players that you need okay, to yeah, Would you add Alexander Madison? Without Dalvin yes, Cook, would you yes. add Madison over MVS? If I don't need a wide receiver to play for me this week, 100%, I would be putting Madison, Tony Pollard, uh, Malcolm Brown. I'd be putting those high... Bonifant? <laughs> no. No. Probably no, not. I, the, yeah, but, I wouldn't be signing but him. But players who can see their value just absolutely skyrocket if, if someone in front of them suffers an injury, then yes, I would be stashing those players. You just want to point. be out ahead of it. Yes. Full stream ahead. All right. Weekly quarterback streaming options for week six. My guy is Jimmy Hansel. Jimmy Garoppolo. The Rams, they're right in the middle of the league in terms of pass yardage given up. They've definitely struggled at times. You saw Jameis Winston take advantage of that. What I love about the 49ers offense is how off balance it keeps you. How do I know? that it's a working offense other than 200 rushing yards. It's when Jimmy Garoppolo decides to throw the football, his players are as open as the Rams wide receivers are, are often open. The play, the schemes, the calls, Jimmy Garoppolo is going to have opportunities. He's got a burner in Goodwin. He's got um, Kittle, who's just a mismatch at every level. And you've got Tevin Coleman back now, who should catch the ball out of the backfield a little bit and give him some opportunities. I really like Jimmy Garoppolo in this one. So that's the direction sure. I'm going. I, I was curious, Brooks, your thoughts on Dante Pettis. Oh. Hey, you can't yeah. win them all. Can't win them all. He is. He's I, worth a stash. I, I still think stick by it. From what I saw late in the game, he's a drop candidate. Oh, yeah. Thank you. All right, Mike. Well, so, uh, quarterback streaming options. So I'm throwing out Gardner Minshew. He's taking. Oh man, he's taking on the Saints. Him in that spectacular facial hair, <laughs> and look, Gardner is. He has been. He has been good. He's not putting up prolific fantasy numbers as we have said. But the last two weeks, quarterback eight, quarterback thirteen. He is. He is safe for your team. I don't. I'm not going to say he has the upside of like. If you want, if you want to go, just caution to the wind. Upside streaming quarterback, Kyle Allen is taking on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And the last three weeks, Teddy Bridgewater, Jared Goff, Daniel Jones have all torched the Tampa Bay Buccaneers for huge fantasy days. So that's that's the guy if I need upside. But if I just need a safe quarterback play if for my matchup this week, I'd go with Gardner. 
yeah, uh, that's uh, that's an interesting one with with uh, Kyle Allen. Who that's a nice preseason storyline. Drop yeah. Baker Mayfield to pick up a guy named Gardner Minshew. <laughs> Welcome to week six. I, oh, I feel like Gardner Minshew even as just person is who Baker wants to be right now. Like, yeah, it's just cool. It is fair. All right, my streaming candidate is Kirk Cousins. Set your phasers to kill. He's playing against Philadelphia. The Philadelphia defense is super against the run, and my and the Minnesota Vikings want to. We run won't the ball. stand for this. They're gonna, you know, it's going. They're gonna try that for super. a while. But the thing is, is they are not good against the pass. The Eagles are giving up 271 passing yards per game, and that includes when Luke Falk pooped out only 120 yards. <clears throat> so, you've got Kirk Cousins, who's averaging uh, more, you know, uh, yards per attempt. He's going down the field, trying to, you know, uh, have deeper shots. The running game opening up the pass. There's been some squeaky wheel stuff. He was pretty decent last week. In this matchup, I think he does well, and this is not a, you know, him and Andy Dalton are the two guys I always check the schedule. I'm like, these are not big, you know, primetime games. We're good to go. All right, let's get into the defenses. Defense versus offense. Presented by Head & Shoulders and Walmart. All right, let's run it back, Jason. You're up. All right, so I am. I, I was a little surprised to see that they were only forty five percent owned, but the Baltimore Ravens defense is out there, and it makes sense. They had two back to back weeks where, in a lot of scoring formats, they were negative. But in those games, I mean, those were really good offenses they were facing as well. One of them being the Kansas City Chiefs, and now you've got them taking on the Bengals. I think that the the zero and five Bengals are not the threat that you know is going to just score a bunch of points without AJ Green without John Ross. I mean they they couldn't do much against the Arizona Cardinals. I don't even care about the points. The Ravens are going to get sacks, the Ravens oh, yes. are going to get turnovers. That's all I care about. Yeah. So they're 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 a great defense this yes. week. Mike, uh I'll save mine because I like yours better. <laughs> All right, I'm going Dallas against the Jets. Yes, Sam Darnold is back. No, I don't care that much. Jets have given up no less than seven fantasy points in any game to any defense. Seems like a very safe streaming play for Dallas. You know, it's funny. You look at week one in the NFL. All these poor quarterback performances getting off to a rusty start and everyone coming out saying this is because they don't play enough in preseason. You know what I mean? Like, they're, they're sitting these starters in preseason. The offenses look trash. Well, I mean, Sam Darnold has not been playing football. So if if that is a true thing where, you know, this, you know, being rusty, having the, the timing, playing real snaps, if you haven't got into that rhythm yet, I, I like the play. All right. Plug your nose, everybody, and play Washington against Miami. Look, the Miami Dolphins are bad. I don't care if they're coming off of the bye week. Washington's going to rally rawr, behind their new head coach. We're going to win one for the Gipper. But in, in reality, I, I don't think it's a bad play because Miami is just – This is truly a defense yes. against an offense. Yes, they are, they are bleeding points everywhere. Washington will be fine this week. Man, that's, that's, that one's interesting. The, the real question is – if you want to get grosser, could you play? Yes, yes you can. The Dolphins yes, defense. You can. Against this Washington offense. They're in Miami. I why wouldn't why do would it. you force anybody to do any of this stuff? Uh, yeah. Because it's why would, fun. No. <laughs> I, I, I just can't see a scenario where my, my needs bring me to Washington and their defense. But uh, Miami has been atrocious. Like I said, 16%. Yes. They're not in the red zone often, and then when they are, they've scored 16% of the time. Josh Rosen is a turnover factory. Exactly. He actually, uh, he's got three factories, mm. distribution centers all over the country. <laughs> for, for turnovers? For turnovers. Yeah, head and shoulders, offense for your hair, defense for a flake-free scalp. Check it out at walmart.com or at your local Walmart stores. I think that'll do it. We fought our oh, way through the waivers. Thank guys. goodness. I can't wait to talk <laughs> trades. I feel like, the, you know, uh, we have a wider palette than these gross – waiver options today it's like a sorbet we'll cleanse the palate after today are we show. talking trades tomorrow yes we are talking trades tomorrow 
man, some decisions to be made on some of these players. Last week, I thought about offering uh, Odell Beckham Jr. for Cooper Cup. Probably should have done that. <laughs> Thank you, Pristine Auction, for sponsoring the show. Sony Michelle signed jersey $72.48 yesterday. Hundreds of daily auctions at pristineauction.com. We'll see Use you tomorrow. Code ballers. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. All right, Navy Federal is proud to support 8 million members, including active duty military, the DOD veterans, and their families. You'll receive a lifetime of membership benefits with Navy Federal, and you can easily access accounts, transfer money, pay bills, and deposit checks with the Navy Federal mobile app. Visit NavyFederal.org slash footballers for more information or call 1-888-842-6328 or download the Navy Federal Credit Union app. Message and data rates may apply.